everyone. Welcome to Who Ate It First, a food history podcast presented by yours truly, Ken Runquist, and my lovely wife. Oh, Logan Runquist. <laughs> <laughs> we are here today continuing our celebration of all things Latin America cuisine. Before I talk about what I am going to be presenting today, because it's my episode, so if you like the Kendall episodes, <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> and if you don't, then... If you don't, then sorry. go back to last week and watch that one. <laughs> Listen to that one. Before we, before I say what we're making, I wanted to play a little game with our listeners and see if they can guess what we're making. Oh, boy. So, as you know, this season uh, has been Latin America cuisine. I do know this. So, of course, it follows that trend. But to give you a bit of a hint, it's a dessert this time. Yes. Going sweet instead of savory. Yay. And uh, putting the cart before the horse a little bit here, but we are using a recipe again from the Latinismo book Ooh. by Sandra Gutierrez. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> And uh, at the top of this recipe, it says, if you are lactose intolerant, don't even try it. I cannot believe that it said that. I literally thought you were <laughs> making it up. So naturally, us, as we probably said in almost every episode now, we are lactose intolerant. Hi. <laughs> so naturally, we're going to make it. <laughs> we're not going to eat all of it. Because we don't like rules. No, we're going to take like one bite <laughs> and then bring it to a game night where our friends can eat it. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, all right. I'm pretty sure they can eat it. Yeah, yeah. No, they can. They're fine. Have you guessed it yet, dear listener? Do you have it in your noggin? You got it in your noggin. I think they do. It's two words. Could be three sometimes. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Uh, it is tres leches. Woohoo. <laughs> what is it? Three words. Pastel tres leches. Ah. Jumping into our little history vehicle. It's like the magic school bus, right? <laughs> we have a history vehicle. Great. Is it's, it like the Wienermobile? Yeah, but it's got a big just picture of both our faces on the front <laughs> of it in like 3D, right? So it's like paper mache, just heads of us. This sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just excited faces about history, and <laughs> it time travels us everywhere that we go. That sounds amazing. Maybe not paper mache because I would break down very quickly, but you know, like mm -hmm. a solid material like steel or something like that. Is, Aluminium is just slapped onto. I don't know. What do you want it like a bus, like the magic school bus, or are we like on a like a, a biped? Something I don't know. Uh, I would like a double decker bus, okay. like a sightseeing For a double bus. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, and that we take our listeners on the double decker bus yeah. that has both our faces on the front. Of it. <laughs> At the helm? Are you talking like like mermaid of a ship? Yeah, like, exactly. Sick. Yeah, at the front of a boat or a ship. Yeah, same At concept. Bow. At the bow. Same exact concept. That's what amazing. what is the name of this of double our... decker? Uh, history tour guide bus. I don't know. I'm going to have to noodle okay. on that. Well, how about instead our listeners can tell us <laughs> what the name So <laughs> Tell us what our double-decker tour yeah. bus is called. <laughs> Why don't we let our listeners christen this thing that I just made up right now? <laughs> <laughs> that might or might not be scary looking. <laughs> yeah. I will, uh, I don't know. I'll draw it. You'll draw it? And then you tell me what the name is. Okay. So, yeah, you can draw it and post it on Instagram. How about that? Yeah. And then our listeners can go to our Instagram account and uh, be like, comment, what's that thing? <laughs> yeah, and comment what you think it should be called. I love it. I love this metaphor that we're on. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I don't know why. I just went down a weird train of thought. Anyway. A weird bus of Pulling thought? <laughs> myself. Ha, 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 ha. Pulling myself way out of whatever train of thought that I was going down. Sorry, not train of thought. A weird double-decker history bus, <laughs> tour guide bus of thought. 
<laughs> Getting back to the history of Tres Leches, most of my information comes from a Food 52 article by Mandy Baca. Uh, Thank you, Mandy. Because honestly, she seemed like she had the most succinct information that I could find based off of my research that I was doing. Slay, Mandy. To give her, to give a little bit of background about her, uh, it looks like based on the article, she says that she grew up Nicaraguan. Nick, Nicaraguan? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I might mess that up. Um, I can't say that very well. You could uh, say she's from Nicaragua. Well, she grew up Nicaraguan in Miami. So she grew up in that culture. Uh. She grew up in that culture in Miami. Okay. She was just saying that Tres Leches made an appearance in her home very often, even if there was no reason to celebrate. It was just around. So basically, it seemed like she wanted to try to figure out where it was coming from. So she created an article on Food 52 after doing a bunch of research, and I'm going to be sharing what she found. So Tres Leches is claimed by several countries, such as Nicaragua, Mexico, Cuba, Venezuela, etc. A lot of them claim to have it. Sure. And of course, as we've come to the conclusion in our last episode, <laughs> I don't think we'll ever know definitively where most of this stuff comes from. So Mandy first asked about a dozen Nicaraguans who immigrated to the U.S. at some point in the 1980s. And then she also consulted several history books to get some information. Nice. And I think compared the results basically of what the people she talked to said and what she found in some history books. She said several had never even had it until they arrived to Miami and credit the first time that they had it at a local Nicaraguan chain restaurant called Los Ranchos. Others remember having it as far back as 1940, around the time that canned milk products were widely available in Central America. Mm. This timeline actually also coincides with a theory that Nestle, Borden, and other companies invented the recipe and put it on their canned milk products oh. as a way to market those products Dang. <laughs> it's like Chex Mix. Yes. It's on the back of every yeah. Chex box. The most likely theory that she came to a conclusion after speaking to several people was that it was most likely at least inspired by England around the Middle Ages because soaking a cake was a way to repurpose old or stale cake back then. Mm -hmm. And even today. That checks out. When she was looking into some books... Uh, she found in La Comida Nicaraguanese, uh, Jamie Wheelock Roman writes, and this is a direct quote, from crisis comes new cuisines. The colonial period gave rise to a vast process of experimentations and mixtures of food that had never before come together. During that period of great change, many products of both kitchens disappeared or fell into disuse. But on the other hand, ingredients were added to each other's natives, native cuisines, setting the path to a varied diet and new recipes. Products such as sugar cane and cattle, as well as new cooking methods, such as the preservation of milk, were introduced and immediately adopted in the area, hmm. in particular Nicaragua. Introduction of livestock was particularly popular because of how well, how well it took in Nicaragua, uh, just based on the environment of Nicaragua, oh. livestock was actually very easy to do. Canned milk was produced as early as the 1850s and increased in popularity during the World Wars. There were companies like Nestle and Borden that had a difficult time keeping up with the demand. So they actually opened up operations in various areas in Latin America, including Nicaragua. Moving the timeline forward a little bit, during the Great Depression uh, in the 1930s, Sales in the country skyrocketed. Sales of canned milk skyrocketed because it was a much a more affordable option and it felt like it added some luxury to cooking. So it's believed that at some point around this time, somebody had the idea to combine the evaporated, condensed, and whole milk products and soak it into a sponge, which is why it's called tres leches, mm -hmm. three milks. Between 1979 and 1990, the violence of the Nicaraguan Revolution, coupled with an earthquake, caused tens of thousands of Nicaraguans to flee the country to Miami 
and a lot of the population settled in the suburbs, suburb communities of Sweetwater and Kendall, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> How do they spell it? Exactly the way I spell it. That's weird. Two L's at the end. Wow. How fortuitous. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Sweetwater is known as Little Managua, which is also where the famous Los Ranchos opened in a small strip mall in 1981. Hmm. Since then, they have three locations, and I think this article was written uh, in 2020, so I'm not entirely sure if they have more locations, but back in 2020, they had three. And Tres Leches cake was added to the menu and was reintroduced to the Nicaraguan community as well as formally introduced to Miamians. Mm. We can extract, I think, three different theories from that. Mm -hmm. Was it uh, just like Nestle and Borden, they made it up? No. Was it something that Los Ranchos made up and actually wasn't invented until they came over here? Mm -hmm. Or was it Something that was made in Nicaragua or somewhere else in Latin America. All right. So that's going to pretty much wrap it up for our history. So let's jump on into the kitchen and make some tres leches. I have a question first. Okay. Do you have a... Woo! I'm back. <laughs> I jumped back out of the kitchen. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just wondering which theory do you think is correct or the most likely, I suppose. It seemed like the Nicaragua one made the most sense to me, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, but I could definitely buy the Nestle Borden thing, too. Mm. You don't think a restaurant made it up? No, I don't think so. Giving them way too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what? in the pocket of big Nestle, so. <laughs> you think it was Nestle? Yeah. That checks out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have no idea. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go jump back into the kitchen. Woo! <laughs> All right, so as we mentioned, the recipe that we're going to be using today is from Latinismo by... Sandra Gutierrez. Sandra Gutierrez. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is her pastel de tres leches recipe. In her book, she actually agrees that it is native to Nicaragua. Actually, in her thing, she says the recipe was created for an ad for canned milk uh, back in the late 1800s. Whoa, that's crazy. The cake is comprised of three components. You have the cake base, the liquid syrup that we're going to be making, and then a cooked Spanish turon or cooked egg white frosting. Ew. Which will probably be, honestly, the most complex part of this. Um, the cake and the uh, syrup is quite simple. The tricky part is actually the last thing that we'll be doing. Egg white frosting? I have questions. <laughs> You're going to have answers. <laughs> once we make it. <laughs> All right. So for the cake, we're going to need two and a half cups or 280 grams of all-purpose flour. Two cups or 400 grams of white granulated sugar, which is a lot. One teaspoon baking powder. Six eggs beaten. Three I need six eggs. That's too expensive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't hold it. <laughs> Three quarter cup whole milk. One teaspoon pure vanilla extract. And that's everything for the cake. Uh component so to to make the cake we're going to first preheat the oven to 350 degrees you'll grease a 9 by 13 inch glass or ceramic baking dish and then in a large bowl you can whisk together the flour sugar and baking powder in a separate bowl whisk together the eggs milk and vanilla then you'll uh, add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients combine well pour the batter into the baking dish and bake for 40 to 45 minutes or until the cake is set in the middle and lightly golden on top. Sugar, butter, flour. And you can use a toothpick inserted in the middle. Uh, if it comes out clean, then it's cake. It's it's caked. <laughs> <laughs> if it comes out, it's cake. <laughs> if it comes out the middle, it's cake. <laughs> I've seen that TV show on Netflix. 
it is it's cake. a cake or whatever it's called. It's called is it cake, but you always call it it's a cake. Because I can't read. <laughs> so every I time we pass by it on Netflix, you're like, it, oh, it's a cake. <laughs> it's definitely a question, but I don't read it that way. <laughs> it's a cake. It's a cake. <laughs> And he's like, no, is it cake? And I'm like, I don't care. Do you see the giant question mark next to the title? I like sentences. They're <laughs> factual. I don't want any questions. <laughs> All right. So once that's done and it becomes cake, then you will cool it completely. After that, you can use a fork or a skewer to poke holes all over the cake. That will allow the liquid to get into the cake because the next step is going to be to make the tres leches mixture. In a medium bowl, you'll whisk together the sweetened condensed milk, the evaporated milk, and the heavy cream. Then you'll slowly pour the mixture over the cooled cake, adding it a little bit at a time, and as the cake absorbs it, you'll continue adding more. She says that this process will take you 15 to 20 minutes, so um, it'll take a little while to do it so you just have to be patient after that you can cover the cake with plastic wrap and place it in the fridge to let chill for at least one hour or until the all the liquid has been absorbed then we're going to uncover the cake and frost it generously with a very thick layer of our tehran that we're going to make and then you can chill it and serve it whenever you're ready to go so talking about the tehran it is the ingredients for it are Six egg whites, a quarter teaspoon cream of tartar, one and a half cups or 300 grams of white granulated sugar, and a pinch of fine sea salt. Okay, so you're going to place egg whites, salt, and cream of tartar in a bowl of an electric mixer. Beat the mixture on high speed until the egg whites form soft peaks, which will take about four minutes, but just use your best judgment and watch it. Uh, then you can set those aside. In the meantime, you'll be combining three quarters cup of water with the sugar in a heavy bottom pot and cook to the soft ball stage or until the candy thermometer registers 238 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 115 degrees Celsius. She says that'll take about 15 to 20 minutes, but when it comes to sugar, um, just keep it a close eye on it because you never know based on like the temperature that you've set your stuff to or whatever. You'll just want to keep an eye on it and keep an eye on your thermometer. Mm-hmm. And then once that is exactly at that temperature, 238, you're going to want to take it off of the stove because you will uh, need to start incorporating it into the egg and sugar um, mixture that you made earlier. So to do that, you'll start beating the egg whites again on high speed, and you're going to add the syrup very slowly. You'll try to get just a nice, thin, consistent stream until it's all been incorporated into the egg whites. Uh, Because if you put too much in there, it'll curdle the eggs. Checks out. And you're going to keep on beating until uh, the mixture is cool, stiff, and shiny, which will take about six minutes. I am uh, curious about that because I've I've seen that technique done. I've never done it, so we're going to give it a shot. And we will be back in a bit. All right. We are back from making it and tasting it. And we are now in Rave or Roast. Where we rave or roast our creation. (laughs) So I guess I'll go first this time since it was my turn yeah you go first okay let's see here so in terms of execution um i think everything went fine actually i don't think i had any issues it was really easy cake was super straightforward it's just it's a very very dense cake like they're not kidding when in the recipe it mentions that it's going to be a dense cake yeah boy (laughs) it's going to be a dense cake but I guess you're off the hook because it's supposed to be that way. So It is. Yeah, it has to maintain its structure when you throw like three cups of liquid on top of it. So that's, I mean, that's why it's dense. And that's why there's so much sugar in it so that it helps retain its form. But yeah, the cake part was super straightforward. 
the liquid milk, what, I forget what I called it, the, the syrup part was pretty straightforward just took a little bit of time i did discover that like i needed to lift the cake a little bit so that i could get it underneath the cake and that helped absorb it from the bottom part too just to kind of help get it all around it Mm. the meringue i've never done that technique before so that was kind of fun getting to use a new technique that i've never done i've seen it a few times but i've never done it myself um but honestly as she mentions in the recipe like as long as you follow the steps uh, you'll, you should be fine. Don't let your sugar get above the temperature that it says. Get it right to that temperature. Take it off the heat and immediately start putting it in there. That's really the, the trickiest part is just keeping track of the temperature and making sure that you don't, you hit that number and then you stop. Like you don't let it go further. And yeah, I'm, so yeah, it was, it was really easy, really straightforward, honestly. In terms of flavor, it was very rich. There's a lot of sugar going on in this cake Mm -hmm. um very very rich we only sliced ourselves a pretty small slice and we shared it and we shared it and we took milk pills and we took milk pills but i mean that's mostly why we cut a small slice because i didn't want to die tonight um yeah i gotta work tomorrow i don't have time for that (laughs) yeah it's a wednesday when we're recording this like we got things to do tomorrow so (laughs) yeah and oh my god i had only half of that and i don't know that I wanted any more because it was that rich. Mm-hmm. And that's coming from somebody who has a quite the sweet tooth, as I'm as you can attest. Mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for sweets. And that was kind of a lot. It was intense. Mm-hmm. I could not eat more than what I just had. And I'm kind of done. Mm-hmm. Well, you also don't really like meringue. Yeah. So I, I mean, I scraped the that part off but even without the meringue like the cake and the syrup doused that is doused in was a lot yeah i'm not even really considering the meringue in that so yeah it it was good i i thought the flavor was good but it was just so rich Mm -hmm. that i would not be able to have more than what i had Mm -hmm. at a time and i will say it's sort of one note honestly too I, i think that's the other thing it's really rich and it's very much like one note. Like it's yeah. it's milk and sweet. You know, I just read something. I literally just Googled this because I'm trying to brainstorm for my episode next week. They said that people have this with coffee. I would buy that. And I was thinking, I was like, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. I kind of wish I would have known that 20 minutes ago. <laughs> And we could have done that. Well, I couldn't have because I actually, I want to sleep tonight. Um, but you could have done that and perhaps yeah. enjoyed the experience more. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Ashley. I would make some coffee. I would not put anything in the coffee. No sweetener, no additional milk. No. Just black coffee. And yeah, I think that bitterness of the coffee would actually help really balance out and cleanse your palate in between bites so that like three bites in you're not already over it yeah well this is from nicaragua nicaragua Mm -hmm. right yeah coffee supposedly the coffee is one of their main exports Mm -hmm. and nicaragua and coffee is like some of the best and it's also very strong so i'm sure that would just really zip right through there yeah yeah so that would make sense so i'll need to try that next time and i mean that probably would help honestly i think it would help a lot just having something to cleanse your palate and cut through that sweetness. Well, I'm sorry I didn't know that 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have known that, I guess. Leave it to me to just go do a Google <laughs> real quick. And just I'm just like, oh. Doing the job for whoops. me. Oops. Uh, that might have been helpful <laughs> to know. That's a whoops. I guess I should have let you do the research. <laughs> it was on a blog of Latin American desserts. And it was just saying like what people paired with it. I was like, oh. Yeah. Oops. Okay. That makes sense. So, yeah, I given all of that, I don't think there's anything else I want to say. Execution was fine. Flavor was good, just really rich. So, I'd probably give this somewhere around like seven to seven and a half. I do like the idea of coffee, though. I could see that easily getting up to like an eight or a nine yeah. um, with some coffee, for sure. Just like some black coffee. What do you think? I agree with all the things that you said 
My number is probably just going to be, because I haven't really had this very many times. It's maybe been once or twice that I've had this. So I really don't have a ton to compare it to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't had it often either. But I feel like you executed all the steps. You didn't mess up like I did last week. But you did you did everything correct and everything looked correct. So I think from execution and like what it translated from paper to physical manifestation, I'd probably give you an eight and a half. Mm -hmm. um, Just like in terms of putting it together? I mean, like overall, I'd give you an eight and a half. Oh, okay. But I just mean like for me personally, I don't think I care for it. It sure. might be a texture thing. Okay. Or, is, is it because... It's of the soppiness. Yeah, it's wet. <laughs> it's cake. soppiness factor. It's wet cake, which feels yeah, incorrect. Wrong. Yeah, it feels. I don't want to say wrong. I don't. I don't mean to imply there's anything wrong with it. I just mean from not having this very many times and not being used to such a texture, it was a little unusual <laughs> for me yeah. personally, and it was very sweet, hmm. which I'm not a super sweet type person. And it also was one note. I could also see some, I know this wouldn't be like authentic or maybe people do this nowadays. I don't know. But adding something crunchy with it, mm. it needed an extra texture to it. something. Yeah, it needed an extra texture or an extra flavor to go with it because it was very milk, sugar. Mm. That's it. There was no vanilla. There's no caramel there's no like at least with this recipe in particular like perhaps there are other recipes on the internet where you can add other flavors yeah people have taken this and made other things i just for this podcast i tried to stick to something that would be considered more authentic than just going like we did tres leches so now we're gonna make the Double decker, quadruple chocolate, <laughs> tres leches, ice cream, ice cream explosion, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I understand. We're making tres leches. <laughs> I understand. I was just trying to think of like from just purely me enjoying it more, what would have made that better for me personally? Yeah. I was just thinking like if there was something crunchy. Or just an extra flavor happening. Yeah. Some citrus. But also, yeah, knowing coffee could possibly be paired with this, that might be kind of good, actually. Mm. I don't typically drink my coffee black, but in this case, I would. I, yeah, I think you would enjoy it a lot more if you had a bite of this and some black coffee. The black coffee would probably not taste nearly as like bitter. Probably. Should I put it in my cup? Like, Should I plop it? And I plop some of it in there. Yeah, just get it extra soggy. Ugh, never mind. I don't like it. So a couple couple things that I want to... Oh, did you finish rating? Yeah, eight okay. and a half for you. Okay. Good job. Regarding your point about it being soppy. I didn't I'm use that word. That. I'm you using used that word. It. I, I'm enjoying that word right now. I don't want to offend anybody, so I'm not using that word. <laughs> Surprisingly, even though it was wet, because of how dense the cake was when it was done from the oven it still hold, held its structure like yeah very well i stood there and took pictures of it for approximately seven minutes yeah it, and it didn't do anything it didn't fall apart even though there was literally like three cups of liquid that we poured on top of that cake it was very impressive so yeah that's pretty wild it was still like i think i've had some others that seemed more liquidy than this one. It was actually still, I wouldn't say dry, but drier than other tres leches that I've had. You could still identify that there had been cake in there at some point in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in to the tres leches episode of Who Ate It First. Woo. As a reminder, we are still trying to hit those goals for our episode listens. So if you enjoy what we've been doing, please do share our episodes with friends and family or even listen to them multiple times. Subscribe. And yeah, if you're able to subscribe on your platform, then do that too. And that way you'll be notified. Well, I don't know about notified, but you'll you'll get it in your 
playlist or whatever. Correct. It automatically loads into your library. Yeah. Whenever we release a new episode. Yay. Yay. So uh, thanks everyone for listening. Oh, and the, the goal for this episode, since this is the fifth episode of the season is um, 20, <laughs> 20, 25, 30. He's counting on his finger. 35, 40. Is it 40? I think 40 was last time. 20, 25, 30, 35. Well, if, if I did that, then I did that wrong. So I apologize. The last time should have been 35 if I said 40. Uh, so this episode <laughs> is 40 listens. All right. That'll wrap it up. Thanks everyone for listening. And we will see y'all in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.